Ah, uh, the NHL draft. You know, it's never without surprises. And it's never without a bit of controversy for your Vancouver Canucks. You know what? There are reasons to both love and hate the Tom Willander pick. And we're going to break that down for you on the other side here on Locked On Canucks. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. day after you know it always feels a little bit strange but uh here we are uh the day after the canucks select tom willander at 11th overall but first and foremost you are listening to lock dog canucks my name is trevor beggs canucks writer and credentialed media member for for uh, daily high vancouver <laughs> and i gotta tell you a championship team is all about each player being a perfect fit it's the same with your vehicle so for parts that fit Head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. I had to shout out eBay Motors quick there. Will we be shouting out Tom Melander here, Kyle? I'm not quite sure, but first and foremost, you know, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, man. A lot of hockey talk in my life. I've made that clear over the last couple of weeks. And a lot of hockey talk slash prospect talk slash Tom Melander talk in my life over the past, what, 12 hours? Had to do it, man. I, I'm a hockey nut right now, and I went down the rabbit hole, and I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I know I know it was ironic. And by the way, Kyle Bowen here, Trevor Beggs, Locked on Canucks. We'll get to the comments at the end of the show. Welcome, Tom Willander, to Vancouver. I know a couple days ago I asked you a question. I think it was based on one of our draft, draft episodes, and I was like, yo, if, if they're at number 11 and it's Benson and Willander, who are you taking? And you said Benson, right? You mm-hmm. said Benson. I just remember that question. And I remember at the time of the draft and the pick was being made, I saw on Twitter that a lot of people were upset, right? The BPA, the best player available, apparently, allegedly, was Benson. But there's the Canucks picking at number 11, a defenseman, a right-handed defenseman, and Tom Willander. Pretty polarizing, blah, blah, blah. And then I did the research, and I watched some of the film. And, dude, this dude does not look like an Ole Levy dude. There is... There are sites that show me that he has the ability to be dynamic. And in a top 15 scenario, you need to pick dynamic players. Now, there's the other thing, too, which I really, 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 really appreciate. And it's based on the interviews, and maybe we'll play a couple clips here. What's your style of play as a defender? Um, you know, I want to be someone who, who really uh, plays a big role in the game, the tough games. Uh, I want to be a two-way defender, someone who plays a lot of ice time. Uh, someone who's good defensively, but also offensively, can be put on, put on the ice in really any situation, um, and someone who can win championships. So, and someone who can win championships. So, and someone who can win championships. So. That was a snippet from an interview Tom Willander did with Satir Shah and Dan Riccio off of Canucks Central, courtesy of Sportsnet 650. Go listen to it, okay? Uh, whenever you get finished with this episode of Locked On Canucks. Speaking of which, uh, let's get back to the show or maybe just one, but it seems as if this guy's destined to get better. There's a level of maturity here, and that quote about wanting to win championships, you know how I feel about that, bro. You know how I feel about that. That matters. And all in all, after two hours of research, of watching film, listening to interviews, I'm more than happy about this pick. How are you feeling uh, 12, 14 hours later about Tom Melander joining the Vancouver Canucks? I, I, I got mixed emotions, buddy, and, and I'm glad you brought up uh, that question you asked me a few shows ago because, you know, my tone hasn't changed. You know, if if the Canucks, you know, and the situation was in front of them, you know, with Benson and Willander both available to the Canucks, I would have preferred them to pick Zach Benson. Um, I see both sides of it, okay? Like the Canucks, you know, I heard this crazy stat uh, this morning. Uh, you know, the Canucks haven't drafted and developed a right shot defenseman who's played, you know, a chunk of NHL games since Kevin Bieksa. It has been 22 years since the Canucks have drafted and developed a right shot defenseman. So, you know, you can kind of see the Canucks logic when they get to 11. You know, there's a lot to like about Tom Melander's game. I think, you know, his ceiling is a first pairing shutdown defenseman. Um, and, and you can kind of see that from the tape. Like, he is so good at defending the neutral zone. He's quick in his own end. He's got a bit, bit of nastiness to his game. Um, but here's the flip side, right? I think it's easier to go and find 
uh, a defensive defenseman to play in your top pairing than it is to find a player oh, like Zach I, Benson who, okay, look at Zach. Okay. Think about this. Okay, okay. You know, I'll ask you this question. Okay. Zach Benson at his ceiling. I've heard like the Braden point comparisons. You can almost see even maybe a little bit of like Brad Marchand light in his game because he plays with that tenacity, that edge, mm, uh, even mm. though he's a smaller guy. Would you mm. rather have that first line winger who like brings that physical edge or would you rather have a, a shutdown defenseman? I guess that's the question you got to ask yourself, Kyle, with this pick. And, and again, you got, you're got you asking me this question after, bro, hours and hours of not just research, but like viewing experiences with smiles on my face. Like I'm like, okay, this guy's going to be a lot better than just a stay-at-home defenseman. He doesn't just look like a stay-at-home defenseman to me, man. It, it seems as if his ceiling is actually going to be just as valuable, if not more, than a guy like Benson because there's a lot of skilled players in the NHL. And when it comes down to it, especially on a team like the Vancouver Canucks, you need defensemen. You need defensemen. And uh, we, we heard the quote, and even the first part of the quote, for a guy to say that he wants to play a lot and he wants to play those tough minutes and then ended off with, yo, I want to win championships, that's appealing. And the Boston University thing is a big thing too. Like he just wants to adapt and get better and ASAP. ASAP, and I feel as if he's going to carry that mentality throughout his whole NHL career. So I guess to tail it back, you're asking me that question. At their ceiling, who would you take? I think you and I have different viewing points on what this guy's ceiling can be. Dude, this guy can, yeah. yo, I feel like he can skate extremely well. Now, I know he did play in like a Swedish junior league. It wasn't like the SHL. He only played like a handful of games, maybe like literally five minutes collectively in those games as well. But there, again, are levels of individuality slash he seems to be very dynamic. There's potential there to, to get that. So I think you and I, again, are having uh, different viewpoints on what this guy's potential could be. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you um, from I've watching the tape. I, I do think he's got some good puck skills, and there could be another ceiling there offensively mm -hmm. as well. But I think we're talking about maybe at his peak, like a 35, 40-point defenseman, which is valuable. Like if you've got a yeah. defenseman putting up 35, 40 points, yeah, he can shut down at a ceiling. Yeah, that's, that's great. A valuable asset. He's not Chris Tanev. He's not Chris Tanev. I think people think he's just like the safe pick. Like he's going to be that Chris Tanev, get the puck out of the zone, make a good first pass. I think he can do all those things, but he can do a lot more. And a lot of that has to do with his skating. I'm not saying that his edge work is going to be just like Quinn Hughes's, but I'm going to say it. I think his edge work is going to translate into him being one of the best skating defensemen in the NHL. He's got. Yeah. You got that look to him. He does. Now we're going to, uh, maybe we'll mention, now, we'll mention it now, okay? Do you feel like, and I got this energy yesterday, right? Because there's so much outrage. There's so much outrage and so much anticipation too. We saw the way the draft board was going. And everyone's like, oh, we're going to get Benson, the best player available, that dynamic forward, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know what that told me, Trevor? And uh, maybe you're going to agree with this. I think you are. I think it just shows how this fan base, and maybe this is just Twitter, how this fan base is already given up on Jonathan LeCaramacchi because they picked a dynamic winger last year. Yeah, this I think that's I think that's a great I think that's a great point. I also think that the Canucks just have you know one of the worst prospect pools in the league. Like, yeah, this team needs mm -hmm. defensemen, but you know what else they need? They need dynamic players. True, they need centermen. They need everything. Like, <laughs> you know, according to the Athletic, back in February, the Canucks had the 28th ranked prospect pool in the NHL. The only teams below the Canucks. Are all have all been contending for Stanley Cups in the past few seasons. So that's why it's so frustrating to cheer for this team. It's like there's no prospects in the system. This team has won one measly playoff round in the last decade, and it was in a bubble with no fans there. So, I mean, yeah, it's you're right to be kind of outraged about where this team is True. in terms of their prospect True. pool. So I just don't think they could be picking and choosing like the best uh, for, for positional need. But I, I will say this, and I think there's a lot of going back and forth because this is multifaceted. It's... I think it would be good for us just to kind of take a hard stance one way or the other. Um, but here's the thing, you know, every NHL team is going to tell you we're dra drafting the best player available. Like, of course they're going to say that. No one's going to say, well, we there's a better guy out there, but we're just going to pick based on positional need. It's a bunch of, course, of BS. Of okay. I think the NFL draft is actually a great example of this. And it's the NHL is similar in, in a way too. In the NF and the, in the NFL draft, you're always picking for positional need because there's so many different positions out there. Um, and, and positions like, you know, tackles, like they're hard to find as free agents. Like you, you pretty much need to drop those tackles. I kind of see tackles as the NHL version of defensemen. Like it is so hard to, uh, to trade for top pairing defensemen. Mm -hmm. Um, that being said, it's also hard to find elite wingers. Like if Zach Benson does turn out to be one of the best wingers in the game, like a Matthew Kachuk, 
And I've heard people say, Benson is not going to be Matthew Kachuk. I don't know. I don't know. He might be, right? That's why it's it's fair to, you know, like Tom Willander and also have skepticism skepticism about this pick. I think both things are fair right now because we're like, actually, as we were recording, you know, rounds two through seven are going on because Kyle's got to take off later today. So, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, it's fair to have multiple opinions on this right now. It, it is fair. And, and on that note, right? Locked on Canucks, your team every day. Trevor Beggs, Kyle Bowen. Episodes coming out every day, Monday to Friday at 4.20 p.m. That being said, when weird things slash obscure things happen like this, like the NHL draft, free agency, the trade deadline, breaking news, we, we got to upload ASAP, all right? We got to upload ASAP. Now, Trevor, you made a, a lot of great points. This team's so polarizing. Uh, this team just has the most uh, amped up fan base because of all uh, all the shenanigans and not a lot of winning and not a lot of winning. It happens. It creates this uh, dialogue and uh, this anger. And here we, here we were again being super, super angry about what happened and how this is apparently the you levy pick all over again. And I get the comparisons and the trauma and we're Canuck fans. I'm not, I'm not angry at people for being angry. I'm not. I get it. I get it. I just, again, did myself a favor. Maybe this is a good uh, divine timing. Maybe it was good that we didn't get together for a recording yesterday because – uh, I would have been pissed off with you. I wouldn't have watched any of the film. I would have just, I would have just taken what you've given me over the last couple of weeks, and you kind of just seemed bored of Tom Willander. You did, you did. He was probably like the last. He was like out of the three defensemen, right? Reinbacher, Simershev. Th then it was like Willander, but you wanted Benson before Willander. I, I could only imagine what you were thinking. Uh, let's actually go back to that. Did when you saw Alvin going up to the table, and this is a great question before we get to break. Well, what did you think they were going to do? Because on Twitter, again, Twitter's a different place than YouTube. There were 70% of the people like, yo, we're getting Benson. And then there was 30% of the people that are like, yo, they're not taking Benson. You know what they're going to do. They're going to play it safe and go back to Sweden. Uh, what, what were you thinking that they were going to do? I 100% thought they were taking Tom Willander. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought there was maybe like a 5% chance they'd take Benson. I, I know I said on uh, here on air, that's what I would have done. Um, but uh, as soon as the Canucks, you know, walked up there, I, I figured they were taking Tom Willander. You know what? I, I do trust some of the insiders in this market and, and some of the people that you and I talked to uh, off the air. And there was mm -hmm. so much smoke around Willander and Danielson. And I figured once Danielson went at nine, if Willander was there at 11, they were going to take him. Mm -hmm. um, I thought maybe because Dvorsky, I think, went 10th. I thought, ooh, Dvorsky slipped into the top 10. Maybe that's an option for the Canucks. But once Dvorsky went 10th, I'm like, yeah, they're taking Willander. I would have been pretty surprised if they took Ben City, even if it's even that, if that's what I would have done. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, you know, you know the deal. If you've been listening to Locked On Canucks since March, I'm not the prospect guy. I'm just getting back into the game. I, I was, I was fifty fifty. You know, it, it was, it was Benson or Willander or maybe someone else. Like I didn't know, I didn't know. But what I did know was that people were going to get pissed. You know, you may not like. I feel like this always happens with the Vancouver Canucks, right? You, you're never going to love the pick. You're never going to love the pick. This all being said, I do feel as if, and I know it's it's not much information, and I'm assuming way too much, but I'm going to be very optimistic here. I, I've been watching sports for a long time. I've been studying sports for a long time, two decades. There's nothing more that in my life that I've studied more than sports. Those <laughs> interviews that Tom Willander <laughs> gave out, bro, they just, they just instilled this belief that I now have in him. And a lot of it had to do with yeah. teamwork and mentality and getting better and getting better, and getting better. And the fact that this young kid wants to leave Sweden and not play pro hockey and collect a check and go to N the NCAA and get, get adjusted to the North American ice, and the, the amount of times that he kept saying, like, he just wants to get better, he wants to get better, mm -hmm. he wants to get better. That's dope. That's dope. And I'll say it again, yeah. championships. He ended off, like, that powerful quote, I want to play tough minutes. I want to play a lot of minutes. I want to win championships. I'm paraphrasing, but that is appealing to a Vancouver Canucks fan and me, Kyle Bowen. And uh, I'm going to put it out there. He was the best player available at number 11. We're going to we're gonna find that out in a couple of years. Locked on Canucks, Trevor Beggs, Kyle Bowen. Let's cut to break and get some more talking about the draft after. So, uh, Beggs, it's nice seeing you, man. It's nice seeing you. Thanks so much for getting me back to being addicted to hockey, man. I truly appreciate you, man. I'm proud of you, man. You're on the Trevor Beggs regimen, you know, 96 yeah. hours of YouTube videos to go through, but you've been, yeah. you've been doing well, man. Uh, we'll see what we can pack it on the other side. I kind of want to touch on uh, reports that the Canucks uh, could have moved down 
and pick up mm-hmm. a second round pick and chose not to do so. I want to touch a bit on the you love you will uh, 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 will Ander thing. Um, but first, you know, I got to talk about something that I literally use age every day. And that is AG1, baby. You know, newborn life, it has to be, it has to be short on sleep. You know, it's harder to work out and eat healthy like I used to, you know, and now it's all, now it's all microwave dinners and, and, you know, just chugging raw eggs. But you know what? That's why I got to use AG1 because I have a hard time eating healthy and being healthy without my glass of AG1 in the morning. You know, Kyle, since I've been drinking AG1, I've noticed an overall feeling of sustained energy, support for my mental clarity, and just better focus. You might not tell from this episode, but I'm feeling more focused, man. I'm feeling more focused. And you know what? I need that because I need to bring you here. I need to bring you the goods here on Locked On Canucks. You know, AG1, it replaces your multivitamins, your probiotics, and it comes in a more simple, drinkable habit. Oh, that's that's something else, AG1. Uh, <laughs> AG1 uses a science-driven formula of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients. Science, baby! If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL Network. Check it out. Okay, okay, we're back. Here on Lockdown Canucks, your team every day. Trevor Beggs, Kyle Bowen. I did it, man. I did it. I watched most of the NHL draft. It was pretty straightforward. I feel like it went by pretty quick. Not a lot of, actually no trades at all in the first round. I know a lot of trades are happening right now as we're doing this, right? Rounds two to seven happening right now. Uh, We'll recap that tomorrow, okay? We're busy right now. We're busy. Today's a really, really busy day in this thing called my life. Trevor Bags. I know you're about to go in. I think you're traumatized more than anyone. Oli Ulevi, are are you really fearful that this could happen here? No, and I want to say something quick on the Oli Ulevi thing because everyone's like, I can't believe they picked him fifth overall. He was a huge bust. You know, injuries derailed Oli Ulevi's career. I think people really forget about that. So injuries can happen to anybody. Like, there's no player. Um, I, I don't want to say not even Connor Bedard because I think that guy's going to be one of the best players of all time. But you know, honestly, no one's safe from getting injured. And Oli Ulevi went through a string of injuries. Yeah, he was picked too high at fifth overall, but he, you know, projected projected to be kind of a safe top four defenseman. And he was on that trajectory until injuries derailed his career. So I don't think Will Anders the next Ulevi, but it's important to remember that, you know, when we all get pissed off at Ole Ulevi, and fairly so, you know, his injury was derailed by careers. It wasn't just that, you know, he was an NHL bust from the beginning. Yeah, that's a that's a good point and a point that I forgot. Or, I think everyone forgot. Everyone just or, gets angry. <laughs> exactly. That's what that's what I was about to say. You know, like maybe I didn't forget, but I didn't want to acknowledge it. The only thing I wanted to acknowledge was the fact, and that's, you know, we missed out on Kachuk, and we got absolutely no value at that number five slot. And I remember being in my whip when the Canucks made that selection. I was driving back from the airport, and I was stoked because, again, longtime Canuck fan, 2001. 2001, I fell in love with this team. And there's never, ever, 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 ever been a number one, a a number one defenseman here. There's been a lot of number twos, right? The Jovanovskis, the Olins. Actually, Jovanovski, I feel like he was like a tier, like a 1B, okay, at best, right? The Edlers, the BXs, the Hamuses. That's what I've been watching in a a good collective of, again, number two, number three, number four defensemen. Never that number one. And at number five, if you're drafting someone at number five, they got to be a premium player and boom. We drafted you a levy. And I assume that we just found our first number one defenseman in franchise history. And quickly, yo, quickly, this guy never looked good. This guy never looked good. Maybe like, no, yeah, he just actually, I was about to say maybe, no, he just never, ever, ever looked good. And I heard that he had a confidence issue too. Like he had an over amount of confidence. That's what I heard. Mm. That's what I heard Mm. right through Twitter. So (laughs) it's not reliable sources, just through (laughs) Twitter. And then if you compile that with injuries too, it's a lethal combination because, you know, you're, you're talking about young athletes always being at the top of their collective tier group, right? It, it may build a bit of an ego, again, the confidence, and then you hit your first roadblock with injuries, not just injuries. Like you get drafted to Vancouver, a really intense market, and these injuries happen to be significant, right, with the back. Bro, you and I getting older, bro. You, We just feeling uh, the back injuries based on, you know, time on attack, a- a.k.a. time on living. Imagine actually injuring your back, you know? It, 
that's tough. That's tough. And Yuwa Levy was never able to bounce back. But I do agree. I think the uh, the comparison is it's just a waste of time right now. It's just a waste of time. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Because I feel like feel like the only tape we saw from Yuwa Levy that was noteworthy was from the World Junior Tournament. Right? I feel like that was the case. Bro, I, compare his highlight packages to Tom Willander, and it's completely different. Because, again, there's level of... There's levels of creativity slash great edge work slash this guy being stand outish. And Yu Levy was never stand outish. Like I feel like his tape was always super, super safe, which is cool, but that's all we got. Yeah, I, and I don't really want to fall that much too far down the Yu Levy rabbit hole. I okay, think there okay. was some good tape from him with the London with the London Knights in his draft year. But yeah, at the end of the day, um, it was a mistake. And then Jim Benning fell too much in love with the player who had a really good world juniors. And that was kind of the story of the draft, right? Yeah. Um, so no, I don't think Will Anders that player. I think he is more dynamic. I mean, so many more prospects look more dynamic now, right? Like there's just true, true. Uh, some amazing skaters out there, like uh, Oliver Moore. And I think this is kind of a tie into one thing I want to talk about here. Oliver Moore, uh, he's worked over the past few years on um, making his skating look like McDavid's. And he had a, a there's a little feature on, on, about him on TV, working with a skating coach showing the skating coach clips of McDavid and saying, I want to skate like this. And the skating Whoa. coach helped him. And now Moore is considered one of the most dynamic skaters. If he stepped into the NHL today, I think he'd be one of the most dynamic skaters in the league. I'm not Whoa. saying he's NHL ready, um, but his skating looks that good. Um, wow. Now, here, here's the tie-in right now. So, again, Cam Robinson from Elite Prospects reported that the Canucks had an opportunity to move down in the draft, pick mm -hmm. up a second-round pick, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. can't do so because they were in love with Willander. And that bothered me, to be honest with Ooh, you. Go I in, Trevor. One thing, <laughs> one thing, when you look at this draft and how deep it was, especially in the top 19 picks, like there was a lot of players in the top 19 who I think would have been top 10 picks in a regular draft. Um, when you look at that, I mean, that's why I hate the idea of falling in love with one player. Like, just take the best player available. Uh, you know, you look at the picks after the Canucks, um, and I'll just rip through it quickly. Daniel Boot, Zach Benson, Braden Yeager, Matthew Woods, Sam Ponzik. <laughs> Axel Sandin Palika, Colby Barlow, and Oliver Moore. Those are all players I would have been pretty comfortable with the Canucks drafting uh, in the first round. So, you know, I could see the argument. I, you know, as we're as we're talking right now, the Canucks are drafting uh, and they picked up Hunter Bruschewitz uh, in the middle of the third round. He was kind of considered a mid-second round pick and a lot of outlets. Uh, so some good value there. So you could say the Canucks maybe are gonna get some fallers and um, use their scouting department that way. But at the end of the day, I just like the idea of getting more value, taking more mm -hmm. swings. This team doesn't have enough prospects. So the mm -hmm. fact that they fell so in love with Tom Melander that they failed to move back and pick up a second round pick where they might have gotten a player who slid out of the first round. Um, like there was a, that guy out of uh, Denmark who I really liked who fell into the 50s, Oscar Fisker Molgard. Uh, Whoa, players like name. that. Uh, seriously, right? What a name, so dude. All, all, all I'm saying is Tom Melander. No pressure, buddy, but you better the Canucks better be damn sure that he's gonna be a good top four defenseman because they had the opportunity if they did truly have the opportunity to move back down in the draft and they chose not to do so, it was likely a mistake unless Willander ends up being that you know top pairing defenseman. I wonder who the team was. I, I was I was hearing uh, reports that Buffalo and Vancouver could have swapped yeah. at 13 and 11. Maybe maybe they didn't do so and I I know the Buffalo Sabres picked Benson and maybe they were afraid that Vancouver was going to pick Benson and they want to swoop up there and get grab him. But bro, what if they wanted Will Ander? You know what I'm saying? What if they wanted him? And what if the Canucks were scared of that? You know, Buffalo has a lot of dynamic forwards. I know they have Darlene and yeah. Owen Powers as well. Uh, Owen Power, right? Did I call him Powers? Owen Power. Yeah, you're thinking Austin Powers. <laughs> I was, dude. I was. Groovy. Oh, Yo, man. great movie, dude. Yo. Oh, what, do you have a favorite one? Dude, all of them are good, bro. They're so creative. Yeah. They're so creative. I, I, I still have a I still have a crush on Heather Graham from Spy Who Shagged Me. So there good. You man. Go. Dude, don't say that out loud, man. Your wife is cooking breakfast in the come I on, think, man. I, I think crazy, I think my dude. wife I, I kind of see like if my wife had a celebrity doppelganger, I might go with Heather Graham. Oh, that's beautiful. You're romantic, me, but... dude. Look at what you did right there, man. You smooth, bro. You smooth, <laughs> bro. That's like me saying, oh, man. Okay, never mind. I was going to go. You're going to say, okay, you're gonna say your girl looks like Beyonce? Oh, yeah, that's what I was yeah, about to say, man. And she's Woo! just a brown girl, dude. Come Holy on, man. man. Okay, okay, okay. We're, we're, we're worried. Okay. Right now. So maybe Buffalo was going to move up at 11 and pick Tom Willander. Maybe. Why not have three defensemen that are sick, you know? They have dynamic forwards. And, and speaking of which, I, I saw a tweet yesterday, right? 
Like, look at all the skill bu Buffalo has compiled over the years. Dynamic skill, blah, blah. Dude, don't – I don't need to be – like, that was, I came from a Canuck fan, okay? I, and, and those are our cousins. The Buffalo Sabres are our cousins, right? We came to get, came into the league together at the same time. Dude, I don't want to see – I don't want to see none of that. And I don't care because the Buffalo Sabres are still the Buffalo Sabres. I don't care if they have all this top-end talent. There's no success there. They made strides this year, but there's still no success there. I don't, I don't think it's relative, to be honest. Now, I yeah. will say, Trevor, I know we're cutting short on time here. I, I do agree with you. I do agree with you, okay? I feel as if this seemed like a pretty blunt move, a pretty straightforward move. And the Canucks are in a predicament where their cap is really annoying and their and their, uh, their prospect pool is so bleak. It's so bleak that I would have loved to see this team, even though I'm really happy with the Tom Willander pick, I would have loved to see this team be more creative. Yeah. Because that's a level of, um, like, that's, a, that's a, a tool that this management team over the years, I'm talking collectively for the Vancouver Canucks, has never really been able to do. I feel like they just make straightforward moves, really blunt, aggressive moves, and don't really maneuver by, you know, using the number 11 pick to maybe get another second, a second round pick and just adding it's, it's, it's never create. It's never creative with the Vancouver Canucks. And I would have liked to see that. Yeah, I agree. And I, there's so many rabbit holes we can go down, but we're, we're running short on time here. Yeah. I think, you know, thinking about, you know, I would love to see the pick up a second round pick because it, it, obviously they lost the, their first and second yeah. uh, in the heroic trade. So anyways, there's so much to talk about, but I think we got to yeah. we got to cut it short here. Get to comment yeah. corner. Uh, I will say that you know we are in the midst of you know rounds two through seven of the NHL draft as we record. So Kyle and I will cover uh, whatever happens here uh, in the latter half of the NHL draft today on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Canucks. We'll also preview free agency as well. But first, let's cut to comment corner, buddy. Okay, okay, we're back. Locked on Canucks, your team every day. Trevor Beggs, Kyle Bowen. What a time, man. What a time. The addiction to hockey is real, man. It's real. I'm spending more time on this network than I am on my other network, okay? Because and even though I'm still uploading every day on the other network, I'm talking about my mind. My mind is just full of hockey ideas, and it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm not disappointed. I'm just saying it is what it is is Comet Corner uh, the best part of the show, right? We always say it because we're nowhere without the fans. If you're new to the show, welcome. If you're an OG like IQ, uh, Cluton, Jay, uh, Marky Mark, right? Viper's Whip. Again, you're invited to the wedding because we're nothing without you. First comment goes to Mr. Orange. Uh, what? Plan oh, okay. So I got, I got to go to this, okay? So yesterday you guys uploaded a video on the feed, right? It was about Tom Willander. It was like a locked on NHL prospect yeah. draft extravaganza straight to the feed. And I think the draft guru who we had on said that Tom Willander will be playing in the SHL for the next couple of years. So his development is still up in the air. You know, we're gonna have to see what he does, blah, blah, blah. And we had a ton of comments right away saying, yo, what are you talking about? He's playing in Boston next year. Well, you, even I know that. That's what Mr. Orange said. And I noticed this on my phone, like we're getting a lot of hate messages, right? So I went, <laughs> I went back to the studio I went to YouTube.com. I made an edit. I went to the podcast player. I made the edit. Okay, we can't be feeding the people wrong information because it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Then we had one person on Twitter back us up. We had one person on Twitter say, yo, what are you talking about? He's playing in Boston. The people at Locked on Canucks told me he's playing in the SHL next year. And I'm like, oh, dude, fake news. Fake news is spreading. And we had to put oh, a stop no. to it, okay? We had to put a stop yeah. to it. And uh, it's funny. I, I'll, I'll say from my perspective, my Wi-Fi froze. Like I actually had like the screen was black and I had the spinning wheels. So I missed oh, like 20 to 30 seconds of what Hattie had to say. So I, I actually good. didn't hear him say that live. Dude, I did I, not I, blame I saw the comments you. after the fact. This, yeah. guy, this guy's the prospect guru. And also I think he's based in the East. Dude, these guys don't care about the, the West Coast. Okay, let's be real. And yeah, I think he Tom also Willander, was not a fan of Tom Willander. He did there you not go. Like I was going to say that. I don't think he was the biggest <laughs> fan of Tom Willander. And I, I I don't know if I'm correct on this, but I feel like he that that news is like it's it's like re, a little recent, you know, that that commitment to to the mm -hmm. Boston University. Okay, I'm not blaming anyone, and I'm I'm not blaming you, bro. Your father, bro. Come on, man. You're that's a I, late I knew, night. Yeah, that's a late I, night I recording. That's a late night recording I knew, for you I knew, after a long in, day. Come on, man. In fairness, I, I knew he was going to Boston University. I probably would have said something if I heard, but I, I didn't hear it at the time. Dude. So yeah, it is what it is. You know, shout out to Hottie. He does a lot of good work. And I think of when you're covering, you know, 
a couple hundred prospects. It's hard to get every little detail right. So it I happens, got the guys to flock, but good on you for making the edit because we can't be uh, spreading the fake news. <laughs> we can't. You know, this is locked on Canucks. This is not locked on Canucks of of what twenty twenty two. This is locked on Canucks twenty twenty three. Okay, Kyle Bow and Trevor Beggs. Comment number two goes to Harpoon Wave. Uh, this guy's a real fan. This guy's probably getting an invite to the wedding too. He said, I told you, Kyle, really good pick. Just have to stop with the Swedish players now and draft more Canadian players. What are you trying to say there, bro? You, you can't have it all, okay? You, can, you can't <laughs> love this guy and just pull out the, uh, the Canada versus Sweden thing. Uh, Willander can play in the NHL in two more seasons. His, he's college hockey bound, and his development will accelerate. Yeah, this guy's a big Willander fan. He's been commenting, I think, time in and time out about that. And uh, I'm excited for his development, man. Again, just uh, he seems like he's just destined to want to get better. And that's a dangerous person for real. And he happens to be on your Vancouver Canucks. The last comment will go to, let's go to Canuck Collector, okay? I have zero faith in any Canuck pick until I see them playing in the NHL. Canucks haven't hit in the draft for four years. And Pod Colson and Huglander really aren't that great. It's dark. It's pessimistic, that comment. And it's a really, really big year for those two quote-unquote prospects. They're not prospects anymore. They got to be NHLers ASAP, ASAP, ASAP. Now, before I let Trevor go, one last note. How, how do you feel about the Heronic trade now, knowing what Detroit got for Heronic? How do you feel? How do you feel? And can you name I, the players? I, I, can you name the players? I don't know who they picked. Well, in the Ax, second Axel Sandin Palika is one. Um, yeah. You know, they actually drafted another big defenseman in round two, maybe Brady Cleveland. They actually might have traded. They actually traded the Canucks second round pick to Nashville uh, and moved. Uh, so that, and they moved down a little bit further in the draft. So um, they actually did pick up Brady Cleveland, uh, a big physical defenseman doesn't put up a lot of points with the second round pick that they moved down in the draft from. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I still have mixed feelings about it. I, I get that the Canucks want to ice a winning team now. Um, and, and I get the value of doing that in Pedersen, Hughes and Demko's prime. At the same time, I would rather you just collect assets, you know, find players at entry level deals, have them come into the lineup in a couple of years instead of having a guy like Herodic who, you know, is going to cost a lot of money. Uh, but that being said, I think the jury's still out, right? Like it's fair to judge <laughs> it. Um, but, you know, if, if Herodic hits and he's playing like a top pair defenseman like he played last season, then I'm going to like the move. But if he kind of Quite. regresses and he's this offensive defenseman with a shoddy defensive game, then it's going to look terrible. So, it's wait and see mm. mode for me. I, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about him, his performance next season, but uh, I'm not going to kind of tip my hat one way or the other right now. I'll just say that I'm kind of on the fence until I see her to play a bit more here in Vancouver. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I think Canuck fans have to love that trade if Heronic lives up to the bill and then some. Because again, Alvin, one of his first big moves as te as a GM for the Vancouver Canucks, for the, again, one of the, one of the, one of the best fan bases slash passionate fan bases in the world of sports. One of his first moves was trading a first and second round pick for somebody with one arm. Like that's a big thing. No, that's a big thing, bro. That's a huge thing. Like, like oh, you don't man. really see, you don't really see that in, in sports. Like, you know, you giving up premium assets for a dude that's hurt. I don't know. We've been watching yeah. sports for a long time. I feel as if we barely see that. And that was a premium asset. And uh, again, if he, becomes a player and then some for the Vancouver Canucks, Alvin has to be credited for being super ballsy. 100%. Okay, Locked on Canucks, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs, your team every day. We'll be back tomorrow at 4.20 p.m. to talk about everything from rounds two to seven. I think that's going to give me a lot more time to, you know, dissect the news and absorb other information from other people and give you the best episode possible. Trevor Beggs, the man, the man of the year so far in my life. In my life, you're, you're one of the you're definitely like you're up there right with my dad okay for real oh, sign man. us out sign us out okay uh, i miss you i miss you buddy i can't wait to spend more time with you in the flesh hey. in august when uh when my wife and kids leave me for a few weeks oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait for that <laughs> okay sign us uh, out, make it the best of it buddy make it the best of it but uh again shout out to the everydayers the occasional listeners and this is your first time listening welcome to the program okay make sure you stay a little while because we got episodes coming out five days a week we will break down everything that happens uh, from rounds two to seven for the Vancouver Canucks uh, on tomorrow's episode, dropping at 4.20 p.m. on YouTube for no reason at all. Um, and if the Canucks make any trades, we'll obviously jump on that as well. And 
finally, we will preview free agency. What are the big holes in the Canucks roster? What are the latest news and rumors? And what do we think the Canucks are going to do on free agency on July 1st? But for now, I'm Trevor Beggs. That guy's Kyle Bowen. Eddie, you've been listening to Locked On Canucks. <laughs>